but a primitive place, a house of worship. Anyways, give you a little back here. Afterwards, Constantine does not forget to whom he owes his victory. For close to 250 years, since AD 64, when Nero, remember when Nero, what he did to Christians? Since that time, persecution of this minority has been going on. Only a few years earlier, between 303 and 311, the, the worst persecution was under Diocletian then, called the Great Persecution. So, up to 311, especially in North Africa, Christians are being slaughtered in large numbers. Constantine issues orders that the Christian church is to be tolerated as other religions are. This is a huge thing going on. Now, this is the ancient symbol uh, taken from some ancient artwork. And this is where people, I mentioned this earlier, although he does not make Christianity the official religion of the empire, Constantine bestows favor on it and builds places of worship for Christians. The actual law was that if you had, if they had persecuted and burned down a Christian church, the government had to pay to rebuild it again. And if they had destroyed copies of the scriptures, they had to have new ones made. He favored Christianity. But, they'll go from favoring, you know, not much later, by 385, it's the state religion. So he began this marriage of the church and the state. Uh, he, was, he actually was not baptized until his deathbed. And some people say it's because he wasn't a real Christian. The truth was, it was kind of bad doctrine. People, there, there was, he believed in baptismal regeneration. And yet when you're baptized, all your sins are washed away. So he wanted to wait until he was dying, until he was baptized, so he couldn't sin anymore. That way, when he died, he was sinless. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, that's that's really what was going on. Okay. And there are churches today that believe in baptismal regeneration. And if you're not baptized, you're not saved. But baptism is no. I know you're saying baptism <coughs> is a symbol of what happens to us when we're saved. We're buried with Christ and we're raised with Christ. But that's not always how it's been understood by different groups of Christians. Some people believe the act itself saves you. That's why some people baptize infants. They're trying to save them. But salvation comes by, what's the word with F? Faith. Yeah. Not any, even, even a commandment of the Lord to believe and be baptized. But it says, believe first and then be baptized. Yes, anyways. So, there's the symbol, and here's, here's actually where it comes from. We've given this before. Uh, the, the Cairo symbol. And it's still used some, in some churches, actually, you'll see it displayed to this day. In Greek, it's coming from the word Christos. The first two letters of Christos, we would call it an X and a P. And Greek is a chi and a rho. So, some of you thought XP was an operating system on a computer. What did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was their idea. I don't know. Uh, Christ in such a way to produce this monogram. That's what was painted on those crosses. That his soldiers went into battle with. The Cairo. What we would call it XP. The first two letters. Well, we would say like CH of Christ. But in Greek it's, it's Cairo. So, Christians use that symbol in that age. Do we have anything else of this? And this is what we mentioned before. February 313, the Roman Emperor Constantine and the Roman Emperor Licinius, they meet in Milan, Italy. You still visit Milan today. It's a beautiful city. You been to Milan? Italy, on a happy occasion, Emperor Licinius yes. marries Constantine's half-sister. <coughs> At that time, both emperors agreed to grant religious toleration to all the people in all religions in the Roman Empire. There was no edict made. They never made a pronouncement, but they did make an agreement. Licinius goes back in the east, and he makes a proclamation, and he wrote it down. That's the one we have in record. We don't actually have Constantine's edict, but we have the one Licinius made later on. But we believe that 
that so they called the so-called Edict of Milan because at Milan no edict was pronounced. But an agreement was made that led to an edict. But it changed the empire. And it changed history. And if you were a Christian at that time, this is party time. This is celebration time. We're afraid we can proclaim Christ. They can't throw us in prison. They can't take our property away. They can't send us to our mind. They can't crucify us. We can hold government positions. You know, it, it was a celebration. Little did they know that this marriage of the church and the state would lead to something worse. Bad marriage started going. We have a few of those happen today. Anyways. All right. When Constantine became the first Christian leader of the Roman Empire in the 4th century, his vast territory was populated by all kinds of different religious beliefs. Okay, how are we doing today? Let's stop there. All right. Now, Bob, were you able to get printed the things I sent to you? No, you didn't know what. Okay. We'll give them out next week. I'm going to give you a review sheet. We'll get them printed out to you. Maybe we'll get to people in church. Ah, I'll try sending them to you. Email too. All right. To start you studying for admission. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. I'll send them out to you, but we'll make some copies too. All right. You don't know the date of the midterm. No, we'll see how we're going here. But we'll give you a lot. I want a couple of weeks to digest this stuff because you're going to have to have some stuff memorized. And you're we're, you're all pretty good at forgetting from one week to another. But I understand. We're cold. No, it's not. The research shows that if you hear something, see it, a week later you remember about 20%. But if you teach something, study it and teach it, you remember 80%. That's why the teacher looks at the students and says, why don't you people remember anything? He's teaching and he remembers 80%. You're learning and you remember 20%. That's how the brain works. You're just normal people who forget things a week later. Yeah. Uh, just a week later? <laughs> My memory is bad. Very oh, bad. You've got an extra special gift. Uh, no, you're just, people tell me, oh, everybody tells me their memory is bad. Oh, their memory is normal. You know? No, I, I, I had a disease.